Here, in the mountains of northwestern Pakistan, lie the remains of Takht Bai, a vast Buddhist monastery dating back two millennia. It is one of the finest archaeological monuments to Pakistan's ancient past. It is also considered an important reminder of the rich multicultural heritage of what is today a predominantly Muslim country. Swat Valley to the north of Takbai, another ancient Buddhist monument has come under threat from extremists, thieves and even property developers. The fight to protect it has fallen to an unlikely defender. <coughs> Osman Ulasiar is a school teacher in the village of Saidu Sharif. In 2008, he stopped local boys playing cricket at an ancient Buddhist temple. The next day, he found that the boys had reported him to the Taliban and his life was in danger. The Taliban believe statues are un-Islamic and idolatrous. They defaced one giant Buddha statue at Jahanabad in 2008 during their brief control of the Swat Valley. Osman feared that something like this might be his fate, or even execution. This video shows a man being punished for allegedly selling bad meat. Osman was held captive for two days, then released with instructions to come to a religious court for judgment the next day. To protect himself, Osman seized upon the Taliban's belief in the strict segregation of men and women outside of family life. The <laughs> Osman has taken it upon himself to defend the site not only from Taliban militants and local cricket players, but also from drug addicts and illegal construction. He even built a 100-metre fence at his own expense to secure the ancient remains. But he says real security for the Saidu Sharif stupa and similar archaeological sites can only be achieved by raising public awareness of their historical value. The heritage Osman seeks to protect is part of the Gandhara civilization, which was at its height from the 1st to 5th centuries AD, centered on what is now the city of Peshawar. It extended west as far as Kabul, north to the Hindu Kush mountains, 
and east to Taxila, near present-day Islamabad. Takht Bai is one of the greatest achievements of that time. Inscriptions here suggest that construction began in the first century AD during the reign of Gondofaris, king of the Greek-influenced Parthians. The name Gondofaris is thought to have evolved into Kaspar or Kashbard, traditionally the name of one of the wise men from the east who attended the birth of Jesus Christ. Parthian rulers were tolerant of the diverse cultures thriving within their Gandharan kingdom. They themselves, like the biblical wise men, practiced the religion revealed many centuries earlier to the Persian prophet Zoroaster, or Zarathustra. Many scholars agree that Zoroastrian innovations, such as belief in a single god and the duality of good versus evil, influenced the development of Judaism, Buddhism, Platonism, Christianity, and Islam. A collection of ancient coins is held here in the museum at Peshawar, provincial capital of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Preserved for 2,000 years, they help tell the story of the kings who presided over the golden age of the Gandhara civilization. Towards the end of the first century AD, the power of the Parthians declined as tribes of nomadic horsemen migrating south from Central Asia began to establish the Kushan Empire. This coin, minted in the 2nd century AD, shows the Kushan Emperor Kanishka. The flames rising from his shoulders suggest the influence of Zoroastrian beliefs in purification and sanctification by fire. Kanishka and other Kushan rulers encouraged the coexistence and interaction of a broad pantheon of religions and cults to which Buddhism was central. Here, Buddha is depicted with his name written in the Greek alphabet. Mahayana Buddhism, reconfigured through its encounter with Zoroastrianism, crossed the Pamir Mountains on the Silk Road from Gandhara into China, where it affected Taoist and Confucian thinking. In Gandhara, with Kushan patronage, Takbai became a major centre of Buddhist worship and study, which it remained for six centuries until the advent of Islam. The artistic culture of the region, carried forward from the Parthian era, continued to flourish under the Kushans. Many Gandharan works of art, like this sculpture from Takht Bai, show strong Greek influences. On the right is the Buddhist deity Hariti, protector and sometime devourer of children. On the left is her consort Panchika, father of her 500 sons and daughters. The style of the stone carving on Panchika's tunic is particularly Greek, emphasizing Takht Bai's status as an intercontinental, multicultural melting pot. People from China, Korea, and uh, from other Central Asian part, they used to come here for, to learn the Buddhist sutras here. And this was a main center. Uh, you can call it, it was a main Buddhist university back 2,000 years back. Conservationists say that without swift attention, Takht Bai faces irreversible damage. We witnessed people climbing around the towers without any restriction, even though this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Dr. Samad says it is vital for the nation's understanding of its own heritage to preserve not just the concept of religious tolerance, but also its physical embodiment. 
So this is the origin place of religious harmony because uh, you can see here, take the example of Takht Bayi and the art which is produced from Takht Bayi, you can see in Peshawar Museum that almost five to six different religions, they were uh, emerged, they were living together. You can see in one panel Hindu, Buddhist, Greek, Roman, Persian gods in one planet together. It means that they were living together peacefully and very happily. As we walk around the site, Dr. Samad is transported back in time and gives a vivid picture of what life was like in this great center of Buddhist learning. The Buddhist monks they used to live with their teachers and uh, you can see the cells, these are the living rooms and they used to worship here and they used to study the Buddhist sutras. This computer reconstruction shows what the main stupa court attacked by might have looked like. A Buddhist stupa was made of several parts, each with its own purpose and symbolism. The base is called the Pradakshinapatha. The monks used to walk around it and chant their prayers. The dome above it is called the Anda. It represents the earth mound that covered the remains of Buddha. The drum is a unique feature of Gandharan stupas, decorated with sculptures. At the top, the chatras represented the seven earths and the sky. The main stupa at Takbai was surrounded by chapels. Each chapel housed a statue of Buddha, but all of these have been removed or stolen. Well, stupa is the main uh, worship place for Buddhist people. Uh, even now, today, they used to worship uh, the stupa because of the holy relics enshrined inside the stupa. Uh, here you can see, this is the square, typical Gandharan type stupa. The Buddhist monk and people, Buddhists, they used to circumambulate anti-clockwise and chant different words like Buddham Sharadam Guchami, Dhammam Sharadam Guchami, Sangam Sharadam Guchami. And uh, this is the main stupa in the Takht Bai Buddhist complex, and uh, which, has, which was constructed by the Kushan rulers in almost 2nd and 3rd century AD. The history is fascinating, and yet some local people have very little knowledge of it. Myths about the origins of these ancient ruins are perpetuated, as we found out when we spoke to some picnickers. Before the creation of Pakistan by the partition of India in 1947, consolidation work was carried out to preserve the ruins at Takht Bai. The marker stones left behind by the Archaeological Survey of India have clearly given rise to some misunderstandings, despite the presence of information displays in the local Urdu language. It's a dispiriting picture. The Pakistani officials insist things are changing and that they are doing more to protect their country's rich heritage. The government of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, home to Takht Bai and Saidu Sharif, has introduced legislation with stricter punishments for stealing and smuggling artifacts, as well as damaging or building on historical sites. But evicting people is a huge job and could cause hardship for poor families. The village of Sedi Behlol is another UNESCO World Heritage Site. Most of the land has been converted into farms and villagers have built houses on top of the ancient perimeter wall. Unlike Takht Bai, it has suffered profound and irreversible damage. Siri Balul, the Tahbai site, is about 4 km distance. 
دا ولی ډیره هم د دې یو مین وجه دا چې کم دا ډیر قریب دی د تخبای مونستری سره خدا دا یو فیکټری دا کم زه چې په یو لارج کوانټیټی کې مقدار کې دلته بس کلپ چت تیار ایدن مونږ چې زمون شاته کم وال دی دا د ډایپر مسینری مونږ ای ته وای د دغې نه کنسټرکشن شوی او دا پوره د سریبالول کلی نه چاپیره دی دا ماونټ چې دی دا بیسکلی ټول اکوپایډ شوی دی ریسنټلی چې څونه کورونه دی د هغې په وجه دا ټول ایریا اکوپایډ شوی ده مونږ سره د دې وجه څه ده چې کم مونږ سره د ایریا یو خو زمونږ اویرنس نشته بل دویم زمونږ چې کم دا ایریا دی نو ار زمونږ پخوا چونکې دا ایریا یو بارانونو وغیره کې یو فلډ وغیره به ډېر راتلو نو پخوانه صدی او نوم دا سیستم را روان دی چې کم یو هایټ ایریا یا غمونګه اکوپایډ کو چې مونږ سیف یو نو چې کم سیویلایزیشن یا کم کسان راغلی دی یو ایریا اکوپایډ کړی دی نه با چې ایسو فالو فالو کړی دوم دای د با سای بیلډینګ جوړ کړی نو مونږ ته یو ارټیفیشل ماونټ شیپ را کړی دی نو هغه یو ایزی اکسس دی ټول د پاره او سیف هم دی نو په دې کې مونږ ته ډېر زیات ګران چې دونه و لارج ایریا پاپولیشن مونږ د دې ځای نه مسپلیس کو ځکه ایته بیا ما هغه شان مونږ ته و ایته مره لینډ بیا پرووایډ کول غواړي او دا یو لارج سکیل باندې دا پکاري او دومره سورسز ګورمنټ سره نی چې ایټ ا ټایم دونه یو هول ویلیج یو ځای نه مسپلیس کې یا بل ځای ته یې ترانسفر کړي د ریمنټس اف د وول ار دی اونلی ویزیبل پارټس اف دی اینشنټ سیټلمنټ which dates back some 2,000 years. But locals say it too is under threat. The welcome is that it's a very good thing. The other thing is that it's a very good thing. The other thing is that it's a very good thing. The other thing is that it's a very good thing. The site has also been extensively looted, perhaps by people who believe that they can earn money and perform a sacred religious act by digging out what they view as the relics of infidels and selling them in the market. This sculpture from Seri Behlol is kept in the Peshawar Museum. Winged figures known as Atlantes are shown supporting the masonry above them. Like the Atlantic Ocean, they take their name from the Greek god Atlas, whose job it was to support the heavens. Here Buddha preaches from a lotus throne, flanked by ornamental Persian columns and by students devoted to achieving enlightenment. This panel was discovered during excavations at Seri Behlol from 1911 to 1912. Contemporary archaeologists clearly face serious challenges in their struggle to preserve Pakistan's heritage. Perhaps some answers may be found 8,000 kilometers away in Rome, home to 51 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. One Roman archaeologist is also a leading expert on the Gandhara civilization and has spent more than 30 years working in Pakistan. You know, the archaeology and uh, heritage management in, in Italy has a long history and started uh, centuries ago, so we have a background. Pakistan is forming its background on that aspect. I'm sure that uh, soon the situation will change positively as far as concerned the management of cultural heritage in Pakistan. There is another aspect which is quite, quite interesting, which is recent, I mean, has been recently introduced in Italy, is the intervention of the private sector. For instance, the Colosseum, as well as Fontana di Trevi, has been recently restored under the support of two private uh, um, firms, uh, fashion brands very famous, uh, Todd's here at the Colosseum and the Fendi family at the Fontana di Trevi. Before Archaeological heritage were perceived in Pakistan as well as in Europe and in Italy as a burden, as a sort of an obligation. Now, wind is changing, and everyone is perceiving that uh, in, uh, is uh, considering archaeological heritage and monuments as a real asset, even in terms of economic return. 
Here in Rome, for instance, archaeological tourism is the major industry for the city, the major source of income. But while Dr Olivieri says Pakistan is learning from Italy's experience, he also believes outside institutions need to play a more hands-on role. No, UNESCO should step in in SWAT. I'm, I'm totally in favour of that. And not only uh, when SWAT should be considered, or portion of the SWAT Valley should be considered as a, as a living and cultural heritage unit. It's, it's, it's uh, something that should be protected for the next generation. Dr. Olivieri has himself trained conservation workers in Pakistan and has directed the excavation of sites like this one in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa's Swat Valley. In 327 BC, the Macedonian king Alexander the Great fought a major battle here when he laid siege to the fortified town of Bazira or Barikot. Making archaeological sites government property is an important step towards ensuring that they are properly managed and protected. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa's Directorate of Archaeology plans to spend around $3 million on acquiring 12 such sites in SWAT, including Barricot, in a move that Dr Olivieri has described as unprecedented. The the <laughs> But back in Saidu Sharif, 15 kilometers northeast of Barikot, Osman al is not convinced. antiquity <laughs> The the <laughs> The <laughs> Subai director the member report kade, minister the member report kade, khuda rose pare baagi chais ke samkar na de kade, taus to zaga se khem. Dekhe da dewal ho rahi. Wo da dewal ta sugu re dam da dia saare khade me ta salsul de da aga abadi da da malbo ho rahi, da malbo was da dekh gar na katai shivi da dal tarawda shivi da, wo da malbo pade yar chhola shivi, chhada dekh da na khio rakhi shi, wo pade bande. The land map is the same as the land map. The land map is the same as the land map. The land map is the same as the land map. The land map is the same as the land map. The land map is the same as the land map. The land map is the same as the land map. The land map is the same as the land map. The land map is the same as the land map. The land map is the same as the land map. The land map is the same as
یو عام د لینډ ماپ یخل کو قبضہ کړی دا د قران شریف په صورت حجرات د سو آیاتونو ترجمه دا چې خدای پاک پر ما جی ما تاسو پیدا کړی د یو نارینا او یو زنانه نه اول نه درجه چې زما دا به حیثیت انسان ده دوی به جی ما تاسو تقسیم کړی په قومونو او قبیلو کې د په په جنگلو نقونا او قبیلې او بیا داغه ساک او داغه تاریخ او د دې تاپوس چې ده نو دا عین زما په خیال چې د قران د منشا مطابق یو کار دی و زه به حیثیت عثمان یو پرس یو یو شخص چې زما یو ذاتی وجود چې ده نو د دې نه که زما د پلار زما د مور زما د نیکا زما د ټول خیل او ټبر تاریخی حوالے لری کے نظام ذاتی وجود اس سے نہ پادی کی گی داشان د دی سی میں ٹول تاریخ او تہذیب چ دے ان 2016 a team of specialists began the process of repairing the vandalized buddha at jahanabad just north of saidu sharif first a protective paste was applied to prevent further damage then preparatory studies were carried out in Italy based on photographs taken before the destruction and the painstaking reconstruction work got underway. Finally, with the face of the Buddha restored to its former glory, control of the site was handed back to the government of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. <laughs> Two thousand and sixteen also saw the lifting of a government ban on visits by foreigners to Swat and the arrival in the valley of the first Buddhist pilgrims since the expulsion of the Taliban in two thousand and nine. In May two thousand and sixteen, these monks travelled one thousand eight hundred kilometres from Bhutan in the east. in Himalayas to pray at the Saidu Sharif stupa a site that is deeply sacred to them many have followed in their footsteps the welcome extended to the buddhist monks and the willingness of the provincial government to fund some preservation initiatives seem to offer hope that the rich multicultural heritage of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa may become more widely known and celebrated within Pakistan and abroad. However, from the perspective of Osman Ulasiar and others like him, neglect, looting, land grabs and lack of awareness remain powerful threats. The response to these dangers and the success or failure of continued conservation efforts will determine whether beautiful archaeological monuments like Takht Bai are preserved for future generations. <laughs> <laughs>